it's Thursday. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this little crocodile. Now I know what you're going to say. The crocodile did not win the Not My Idea vote, but what he did do is win the second chance draw over on my Patreon. So if you are interested in getting a written version for today's pattern or in voting for future second chance draws, I'll leave a link in the description down below. A written version will also be available in my store, which I will also link. Now, for those of you paying attention, you would have seen the original design in last week's video, but I am much, much happier with the design that we are going to be showing today. Okay, well, let's get into it. All right, let's talk tools and materials. So for today, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in two different colors. So there'll be the color that you use for the belly of your crock and the color that you're using for the outside. Now also optional in this is that you can have some white to add some little teeth to your crock. Uh, they are a piece that you can just choose to leave off if you prefer him with a no teeth look. So you're also going to need a pair of 20 to 21 millimeter safety eyes. Now these ones here were just plain black and I used an acrylic marker to draw some yellow circles on them. Then I neatened the edges up with a Sharpie. So that's how I got that look. Now I have done a few different techniques with eyes like this. So this is something you can get really creative with. You're going to need your 3.5 millimeter hook. You're going to need pins and needles and scissors and some stuffing, but that's it. All right, so for today's pattern, I think it's the most complicated knots I've ever been. I'm going to be making up the names of stitches. We're going to be working a base piece and then layering a flat piece over the top. And we're going to be attaching the eye sockets as completely separate pieces. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, so how we're going to approach this little crocodile. He's made up of a couple of main pieces. So the first piece we're going to work on is the base piece that forms the foundation for him. Now, if you've done my dragons, you're very familiar with the kind of construction we're going to use today, so that's good. So we're going to use the belly color and we're going to start at the tip of his nose. And what we do is we work to the back of the head. We use short rows to curve the neck down and we work up a couple of rows of the neck and then use short rows to curve his chest around and then we work rows until we reach the end of his tail. Okay, so I'm gonna start by working up a magic ring with six single crochet in it, just like that. Pause now to work up the next 10 rows and then come back when you're ready for the next step. Okay, so that's the end of row 11 and you should have 26 stitches around and, and that is what the nose of your little crocodile looks like. So in the next round, I'm just going to work 13 single crochet and this is a short row, which means we're not working in all of the stitches designed to move our starting point. Okay, so for the next eight rows, we're going to be working short rows, chaining one and turning at the end of each back and forth to form the curve of the head. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to chain one and turn to get started. And then I'm going to work 18 single crochet back along those stitches. So that's 18 worked along that edge. We're going to do seven more rows of that, just working backwards and forwards, chaining at one and turning at the end of each row. So pause the video here until you're ready for the next part of the tutorial. Okay, and that final row is just one stitch, which is a final decrease three, just to combine those last three stitches into one. So that is the end of our first round of short rows. This is what your piece should look like. The tip of the nose there, so that's where the face will basically end. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is working around this opening to form a little bit of a neck. And it starts with us working eight single crochet along the ends of those short rows until we reach where the underside of the chin will fall. So put eight stitches along that stretch. So the next stitches will be worked into what was left of row 11 and we're going to be working a series of increases and single crochet until we reach the other side of that like so. So now what we have left in the round is eight single crochet and we're going to work them once again into the end of the rows which means the last of those eight stitches is going to fall in the decrease three from the previous round like so. Okay, so we have one more row to work to form the rest of the neck, and then we'll be moving on to the chest piece. So pause the video until you've completed the next row. So there is his neck finished. Where we place our next group of short rows might seem a little counterintuitive, but that's because we want him to curve around. So I'm gonna put 20 single crochet in to move our starting point. So just as we did before for the back of the head, we're now going to work short rows backwards and forwards to curve the chest. So I'm gonna start by chaining one and turning my piece and we'll be working eight rows backwards and forwards. So you can pause the video now to work on that. Okay, and once again, the final row for these short rows is a decrease three, just like that. Okay, so this is what your piece should currently look like. So you should have a point where that's his nose, a curve for the back of his head and then a curve for his chest off to the left-hand side of his snoot and then a cavernous opening. <laughs> 
on the other side. Okay, so for the next row, we're gonna start by working nine single crochet along the edges of those short rows until we reach where they join onto the main headpiece. We're then going to put 10 single crochet across those stitches. Just like that. And now to finish the round, we'll be working nine single crochet along the remaining edge with the final stitch falling in that last decrease three from the previous round. So you should have 28 single crochet in total around. All right, so at this point, all we have to do is work the 14 rows down to the point of the tail. Now you can choose to stuff as you go if you like, but I'm going to wait until we've narrowed the tail down a little bit more and then I'm gonna stuff the whole thing in one hit. So pause now until you have finished your tail. I'm just going to take this chance to poke a last little bit of stuffing in. You'll see that we've got that little opening at the base. What I'm going to do is using my tail, I'm going to insert my hook through each of those stitches and pull that tail through, just like that, and then give it a pull. And like a little drawstring bag, that'll close you off at a point. And weave that tail in. Okay, kind of a difficult one to show you properly because it's got like an interesting topography happening with it. But that is the base of our crocodile. So now we're just going to pop that to one side. Okay, so the next piece that we're going to be making is... The almost little jacket piece that goes over the top of our base and gives us this two layered effect. So that's a piece that we actually construct completely flat. It starts at the tip of the nose and it works down and around to the tip of the tail all as one big piece. And we will be leaving these sort of negative space gaps in it that show sort of as stripes down his back. Now that's not just for aesthetics. Those gaps actually help the piece curve the way we need it to to cover the back properly. You, you can't skip those. So we're going to grab our other color and start at the tip of the nose. So I'm once again going to start with a magic ring of six, like so. And then I'm going to work an increase, two single crochet, and an increase. Okay, so that should leave two stitches from your magic ring not worked into. Here on out, we'll be working backwards and forwards in rows. So I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm going to start with an increase. And in the next stitch, I'm going to do something that I call a nostril stitch. Now, somebody did let me know what the name of this stitch was, and it was like a pico, picot. I am an uncultured Australian, so I'm going to refer to it as the nostril stitch. To do that, we're going to put a single crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to chain three, and then I'm going to put another single crochet into the same stitch. So it's basically an increase with a little chain in between. I'm then going to put a single crochet into each of the next two stitches and then I'm going to work my second nostril so single crochet chain three and then single crochet back into the same stitch finish off that row with a one last increase so this is what your piece should look like right now all right chain one and turn okay so for row three I'm going to work two single crochet and then a decrease. So that decrease is going to fall in the same two stitches that we made as part of that nostril stitch. So I'm gonna decrease there and skipping the chains all together. Decrease there. I'm gonna complete that decrease and then I'm gonna make sure that that little chain loop is popping out the front side. So this is my back with the tail hanging off it. This is my front and I've just made sure that that decrease has popped that little chain loop outwards. So then it's two single crochet and then another decrease to do the same thing for the other nostril. So that's my decrease. You'll see that it's sort of curved one way. We're just going to pop that nostril out just like that. And there is our second nostril. And I'm going to finish the row with two single crochet. So there is our nose done with these two little nostrils. So now we are going to be working the next nine rows, working backwards and forwards in the exact same method, which will bring us to just before our first little negative space stripe. So pause the video here until you are ready to start working your stripes. Okay, so that is the front part of the head. And you'll note that it is sort of trying to bulge out a little bit maybe on both sides. And just for the sake of argument, we're gonna just try it on and you'll start to get a feel for what your little croc is gonna look like. So now that we've worked our way back to there, what we're going to be doing is in the next few rows is starting to build up the stripes. Now I warn you that this piece here works up to be a very strange shape. That's what happens when you flatten out curves. So chain one and turn. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in two single crochet to get us started. So one and two. I'm then going to chain six. And then I'm going to skip the next six stitches. And I'm going to put a single crochet in each of the last two remaining. So see there we've got sort of a little loop that we've made. And then chain one and turn. And in the next row we're going to first of all put a single crochet into each of those first two stitches. And then over the top of that chain piece, meaning I'm just going to insert my hook around it, not through any of the particular stitches, just around, I'm going to work six single crochet across those chains. So the reason we're working around and not through any of the stitches is because it gives us this kind of nice edge to the inner side of it, as well as the fact that later on we'll be working a different amount of stitches over the chains than the number of chains we have. And then to finish that row, I'm going to put a single crochet into each of those last two stitches, like so. So that is our first stripe worked up completely. So I'm going to work one more with you. So chain one and turn, and we're going to start again, two single crochet, so one and two. And then I'm going to chain six and skip six and put a single crochet into each of the last two stitches. So then we've got a second loop forming. So chain one and turn, and I'm going to work 10 single crochet back across. So two in those first two stitches, six across the chains, and then one in each of the last two stitches to finish off. So we should have 10 across. So now we have two stripes. Alright, so that's our first two stripes and we're going to work the next four stripes in the exact same way. Remember, the stripes will not all fall in the centre of the row. So press pause now and hit play again when you're ready for the next set of instructions. Okay, so that was the fourth stripe there and as you can see, it's a weird one. It's not centred at all. So, so these ones here where they seem like they are wider than they are, that is exactly what's going to help this piece curve around our body shape. Okay, so now we're just going to work up the rest of the stripes and the tip of the tail. So. The instructions are on the screen now. Pause and come back when you are ready to start looking at the next piece. Now, what a train wreck of a piece, right? Three dimensional objects are just not really designed to be squished flat. And what we're going to do is basically pour this like melted butter over the pancake that is our crocodile base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert my pin through the middle of our magic ring on our nose piece there. And what I'm going to do is pin it Again, through the very middle of our starting magic ring on our base piece. That is your nose lined up. So the next thing I'm going to do is where we finished off is the tip of the tail. So I'm going to just gently sort of curve it around a little bit, but make it so that the finishing point matches up with the tip of our tail. And I'm going to pin that in place as well. We will adjust that slightly in a moment, but for now that's a really good starting spot. Now what we're going to do is just gently pull our covering piece into place where it goes. So. Where our stripes are bulging off, they should be lying fairly flat against the back. So I'm gonna just pull on either side, like so. So I've grabbed this end and I'm wrapping it around. Then I'm going to grab the other side and pull it over as well. Okay, so now that we have the body roughly where we want it, the stripes are a little free form and everything's going to be moving around a little bit. We're going to do the face. So the face has these like two cheek bits and what we actually want to see is a base color curl upwards as though forming part of a smile and we want to see it on the other side as well because like crocodiles bottom jaws are the same color as their bellies so it kind of is very naturally forming it on one side here see there's that hairpin shape we're looking for so i'm going to pin it in place so that it doesn't move around too much and i find that for locking something in place a horizontal pin insertion works a lot better than just stabbing a pin in because that can pull out really easily. Whereas if you slide it horizontally through the piece, it'll lock into place a little better. You guys probably already know that. <laughs> uh, so that's one side, but then the other side is looking a lot wider than we want it. So I'm gonna remove that pin, pin that jaw in place, and then pull this around like so. So that's more the shape I'm expecting. I am holding that because it's fighting me a little bit. and pin it in place. Now I've noticed in the process of this my head has become a little bit crooked. Twist it back the right way. And I'm moving this side over a little bit to accommodate that. So see what I mean about you're just going to like tweak things backwards and forwards until you get those two hairpin shapes. Because what they do is not only is it a detail that you find on actual crocs but it's going to give your croc a sort of 
natural little smile, which is going to make him seem a little bit friendlier. <laughs> Though, of course, we all know that you must never smile at a crocodile. Okay, so I'm relatively happy with my head at the moment. So that's the one side from the front and from the other side. So now what I'm going to do is space out my stripes a little bit. So the first few are falling pretty nicely where I want them to. But what I'm going to do is just take one pin per stripe and in the middle, make sure that they are spaced so that you can see just a peak of that color coming through from underneath on each of them. Right, so at this end, we need a bit more space. So I'm actually going to grab that end and pull it over a little bit more. So there we go. So now we've got our stripes all nicely marked out as well. So there is our, I just, I love the very sort of sassy worm that he looks like at this point. So we're going to place that whole piece to one side and next up we're going to make his eyes. Okay, so grab some more of your outer color, which for me is this green. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six. Like so, note that I'm not pulling this really, really tightly. That's because I need to insert the stem of my eye through there. And the stems of my eyes are pretty thick. So I'm not pulling that super tight. In the next round, I'm going to put an increase into each of those stitches to increase up to 12, just like that. So what I've got now is a little ring with 12 stitches around and a magic ring that's not pulled super tightly through the middle. So what I'm going to do is put in 11 single crochet now. So that's a single crochet in each of the stitches except for the last one. And what we're going to do is we're gonna just skip that last stitch and instead I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna turn and we're gonna work back along the stitches we just did. And we're going to do front post. Now, when I say front post, I mean, I'm going to work around the stitch from the front, meaning the side facing me currently to back to the side facing me currently. So even though this is the back of the actual piece, this I'm calling it front post because it's the side I'm looking at now. And I'm going to work nine front post cro single crochet around the rim of that eye like so and so that is what the, the front or the the right side of the piece looks like so that's the side that's going to face out our eye is going to tuck into this little alcove there and now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn and work four decreases around the rim of the eye so you may notice a trend with this piece how we are sort of skipping and dropping stitches at the ends of rows that is intentional and it ends up forming the, the lip that's going to help us attach our eye smoothly. So there's that last stitch that we're skipping for this row. Now I'm going to chain one and I'm gonna turn. And in these four stitches, I'm going to work four single crochet and we're going to work three rows of that, just backwards and forwards. So one, two, three, four. Chain one and turn. One, two, three, and four. Chain one and turn. One, two, three and four and finish off. So this strange, lumpy, weird little piece is our eye socket. So what I'm going to do is I'm using my thumb to sort of poke that little sort of rounded bit in so that it bulges out the back. So we've got this little alcove. Now through the middle of that starting magic ring, I'm going to insert my first eye and we're going to tuck it under that row of front post stitching that we did. And now I'm just going to clip on the back. So there is our first eye and I'm going to make a second one just like it. Right, so next we're going to make our front feet. So for the feet, we are drawing on a technique we used for the axolotl feet a couple of weeks ago, and that is using triple crochet to form little claws. And we'll be doing that in the alternate color. So what we're going to do is start with our outer color. Starting with the left leg, we're going to work up a magic ring of six. I'm then going to go around and put an increase into each of the stitches. So just like this, so that I've worked 11 of the 12 stitches I need to work. And now I'm going to change color. So how we do that is I'm going to insert my hook through the stitch, just like I normally would and yarn over and pull up a loop. So I've got two loops of my old color on the hook. I'm then going to pull my color out of the way and grab the color I'm changing to. And I'm going to hold that color alongside. So you see, I've got both colors off just like that. And I'm pinching it at the base of that stitch. So that's what I've got my left hand doing here. I'm going to yarn over with the new color and I'm going to pull it through to complete that stitch. I'm going to give these little tails a little bit of a tug just to tighten it down. But now you can see we've completed that, st that stitch we were working on and we are now have our new color on ready to work our next stitch. So the next segment is a little bit tricky. The next stitch we're going to work is a triple crochet. It's kind of similar to a double crochet just with an extra loop involved. So what we do is 
yarn over our hook twice. So you see I've got it sort of spiraling around the hook a little bit there. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you can see we've got four kind of loops on our hook there. I'm going to yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the second two. And with just two remaining on that hook, we're going to change back to our other color. I told you it was tricky. So I'm going to move that yellow out of the way and pull that green forward again. So that is just being pulled forward from where we, we left it last time. Yarn over with the green and pull it through to finish that stitch. And that is what that looks like at this point. So that's the front of it. And that's the back where you can see we've pulled the green forward and we've pulled the yellow back and out of the way. So the next stitch is a single crochet. And we're going to start that in the green and basically change back to the yellow in that stitch. So I've inserted my hook. I'm yarning over with the green and pulling up a loop. I'm holding the green out of the way and pulling my yellow forward. Yarn over with the yellow and complete the stitch. And I'm just going to make sure that my triple crochet is poking outwards on the right side, just like that. So that is our first little claw formed. So we've changed back to our yellow so that we can do our next claw as well. So we're going to complete a triple crochet in the yellow. So yarning over our hook twice, insert into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop so that we've got four on the hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the second two, swap to our green. Again, just crossing that over at the back, yarn over and complete the stitch. So that's our second claw. I'm going to now just do again, a single crochet in the green, but swapping back to the yellow. And we're going to triple crochet again and swap back to the green. And this time we are not changing back to the yellow. I'm completing that stitch in the green. So those are the first three little claws on his left hand. So he does have a fourth claw. What I'm going to do is in the next stitch, we are changing back to the yellow for the final claw. And I'm just going to pull it forward. See how it's coming from all the way back there. I'm pulling it forward to where I need it up here, yarning over with it and completing that green stitch. And we're going to work one last triple crochet for this foot, swapping back to green at the end of that stitch, just like that. Now, you can work these all in the same color if this process is just doing your head in, because I get it. Uh, but I personally like the alternate color claws. So we are done with our yellow for now, but we are going to finish this row with four green single crochet. So that's the end of that round. And what I'm going to do at this point is just trim off that yellow. So pause now to finish the rest of the rows on the left leg. So we're just going to finish that off. So there is your left leg. The right leg is essentially the same, so pause now and make it with the instructions that are on the screen. So for each of these legs, we are going to put just a little bit of stuffing into the feet, leaving the legs mostly empty. And I'm just pinching the foot to settle that stuffing in. So we use very similar construction methods to make the back feet. Both use the exact same pattern. So pause now and make two back feet. All right, so there are all of the pieces that we need made. However, so we are going to make just one more piece. It is optional and that is his teeth. Now, if you don't want to add the teeth, just skip ahead to the next chapter where we'll start on assembly. But otherwise, we're just going to make this piece now. So grab your white. All right, so just because I'm working white on white, and you know, I like you guys. I'm just going to put down some backing paper here so you can see, kind of. Okay, so we're just going to start by chaining 21, just like that. So now we're going to turn and work down these chains. So I'm going to skip the first one closest to my hook and start in the second one. And I'm going to start with a slip stitch and then a slip stitch into the next one as well. And then along the rest of the chain, I'm going to do a triple crochet and then two slip stitches. So first up, we've got a triple crochet, then slip stitch and slip stitch. So that is our first little tooth formed there. And we're repeating that five more times until we reach the end of the chain. There we go, finish off. Now, as anything worked into it directly into a chain is prone to do, this has curled around in actually quite a pleasing manner. But if you give the whole structure a bit of a tug, it'll straighten straight out. So there are our six little teeth. Okay, and with that, we have all of our pieces made, which means we are moving on to assembly. So for this part, you are going to need your, no your noodle. For this part, you are going to need your needle. All right, so having already pinned the, the top piece onto our body base, what we're going to do is we're going to sew from the top of this hairpin all the way down and around the edge to the tip of the tail, up the other side, back to the top of the hairpin. 
Don't sew down any part of the face yet because we need to insert the teeth. So that's what we're going to do now. One of the things you guys ask me about relatively often is like, how do these things get sewn together? Uh, or like that's your least favorite part of the process and like I'm with you on that one. So I thought today I might just spend a little time sort of showing you how I approach sewing things on. Uh, it does help that I've got this lovely big curved needle and I highly encourage you guys to seek these out. They really help with sewing tiny pieces together. So to insert my yarn, I don't have a knot in the end. Uh, sorry, forgive me if any of this is obvious. <laughs> I don't have a knot in the end and what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook in the gaps between the stitches of the yellow and poke it out roughly where I want the first stitch to start again out through the gaps. Now the reason I do this is so that first of all where I've started is visible and I can I can find it later so I know where I still need to keep sewing and the other reason is because I can spot it really easily on the yellow and so when I use my hook to tuck it in later I'm going to be able to find it easily and not miss it. So the way I sew things on is I work my needle wherever possible in the gaps between the stitches not into the stitches themselves and by that what I mean is I don't go stabbing through just anywhere I work it through the gaps in through the gaps and out through the gaps. There we go. You can see I've gone in through a gap and out through a gap. Now for this first one, I'm going to actually use my thumb to hold down the edge of that yarn so I don't pull it out. And we're just going to pull that nice and tight. So now we've got that first stitch. This shouldn't move from here on out, so you won't need to worry about it. I'm then going to just work my way along the edge of this piece. Okay, so with that done, we're going to remove any pins that aren't currently functioning. So any from the edge, leaving in the ones holding the stripes because we're not done with those yet. So I've got the pin marking my start point and I'm going to place another pin just marking where we've sewn around to so that we know exactly where we've sewn and where we haven't. So the next thing I'm going to do, because I still have a little bit of green left, still a little bit of room here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread my needle in and then out where that first pin is there. So and then I'm just going to put a little tiny stitch in the middle of it, holding it where that pin is. Right next door, just one stitch over and then out through a gap in the stitch in the next stripe down. There we go. So that's my stitch. Note I'm not pulling too tightly. I don't want it to sort of indent in. I'm going to remove that pin because we've used it and it's done. So now my yarn is out through the middle of this stripe. And again, just one stitch over. I'm going to insert my needle through there and then out through the next stripe down. You can sew the whole way along each of these stripes if you choose to, if you'd like to. I find that one little stitch in the middle holds them in place and gets the job done. Saves you some time as well. Just playing a little bit of yarn chicken here. So this is the end of how far this particular piece of yarn can reach. So I'm still going to complete the stitch by inserting my needle where I want the stitch to be. Then I'm specifically going to direct my needle out again through the yellow of the belly. Just like that. So by Threading it through the body, what I'm doing is I'm making it so that it's less likely to come unpicked. Then I grab my scissors and I just trim off directly against the body and use my hook to poke it in. And it's finished off nice and cleanly. So I'm leaving the pins in the rest of these stripes because I haven't stitched them down yet. But we've done the first half and so do the same thing for the rest down to the end of your tail. Okay, so just because it's always a better idea to work cleanly, make sure that all of your ends have been trimmed off and tucked inside. And once again, just remove any extra pins. Nobody likes to make a blood sacrifice to their creations. So your stripes are all secured down now and so is your top piece except for the head. So what we're gonna do now is pin on the rest of the pieces. So we're going to start with the teeth. So as you can see, there are six teeth and what you wanna do is identify the middle two. We're going to remove that pin that was holding the middle of the nose down and we're just going to tuck the middle point of those two teeth under that nose so that just the little nubs of the teeth themselves are sticking out. And then we're going to repin, making sure that we're going through all three layers. So the green, the white, and the yellow. So getting those two teeth centered is really important to sort of not throwing off the look of your crop. Now one side at a time, rotate the teeth so that all of the nubs point downwards. I'm unpinning the corner of the jaw there just to lift it up and tuck that in as well. And I'm just using my hook to sort of poke them in a little bit further because I got stupid fingers and they don't like to do fiddly things. And then I'm going to pin it back in place. That's one side. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side of his face. So from underneath, you'll be able to see the whole white rim, but from the sides, you should just be able to see the little nubs of the teeth. So now we're going to sew, starting at the top of one of the hairpins, moving down the jaw, stitching through both the layer of green, the teeth and into the yellow, the whole way around the mouth, and then finishing up at the other hairpin. 
Okay, then we just remove all of the pins. Now, as a side note, if you are not using teeth, you can just follow this exact same process, but obviously without the teeth. And then we are just going to trim off and clean up all of our ends. So that includes any sort of pieces of white that might be sticking out. There we go. So now he has his little mouth full of teeth. Next up, we're gonna pin on and attach the eyes, but first I'm just gonna reset the microphone here. Okay, so grab your eye pieces. What you need to be aware of on the eyes is that we've got this square shaped flap coming off the back of them. So we actually use that to help position our eyes properly against the head. So what you want to do is you see this first stripe here, we're going to line up the flat part at the back of the eye with that stripe. And that's gonna be where we've placed our first pins. So I pin both sides of that down. And then we've got kind of a loose feel for where that eye is going to be. Then I am pulling that eye down so that the edge of that ridge lines up with the corner of that jaw. And I'm just gonna move the plastic of the eye a little bit because the stem of it was poking down in the wrong direction. I've just moved it so it's pointing backwards like this. So the trick with making these eyes cute is making sure that you get an equal mix of they're on the side of the head but they're still visible when you look at it, look at it from the front. It'd be very, very easy to just have them side facing so that from the front you can't see anything. But if you want it to be cute, you need your eyes to be both front facing and visible from the side. All right, so we've anchored our eye along the back and down at the bottom there. And now what we wanna do, basically just pin that corner exactly where it wants to sit, making sure that we're not stretching our ridge out too much. We want it to still sit over the top of that plastic safety eye. And then we just give it a check. We can see it from the front and we can see it from the side. So like so. So now I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. And then we anchor the other end of that eyebrow ridge down to the face. Now they're eyes, so you do want them to be symmetrical. I am just going to pop another couple of pins along this top edge to hold those two lines nice and evenly. So there is his eyes from the front, from one side, from the other side, and that's where those eyes go. So we're gonna sew those on now. Uh, the way I would suggest approaching this is I'm going to start the middle here. I'm gonna sew down this back edge, down the side, around the front of the eye, and then down the middle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, finishing up back where I started. Okay, so those are the eyes all sewn on. Don't forget that you can still sort of like squish them around a little bit to make sure that those eye posts are pointing in the same direction. It is time for legs. So pulling the front legs and the back legs in because what we're going to do is pin all four legs on, make sure croc can balance and then sew them all on. So I'm gonna start with the right leg. So you can tell which one's which by the little paws on the hands. Look for the one that forms the L shape between its sort of thumb claw and finger claw, and that's your left one. And we're going to start with the right front one. Okay, so if you imagine that this is a hand, I'm gonna squish the opening flat in the direction of that middle finger. And then I'm gonna count down to the fifth stripe. So one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to line that flat edge up with that stripe. So just like that is how that looks at the moment. I'm then going to, I'm gonna push, give that like a little push against the body and I'm gonna pin it again at the foot to the chest, just like that. So that is our right foot attached. So now I'm gonna grab the left foot. So that's stripe five there, and here we have stripe six and seven. So what we're going to do is we're gonna line up the opening of this leg with the side of the neck so that the end point of it is equal with that, that stripe seven. So you can see stripe six, stripe seven, and the edge of the neck are the three sort of focal points for where we line that leg up with. And you want the, feet, the foot to end up the same height as the one on the other side. Let's pin that in place now. And once again, pushing it against the body so that the thumb hits the chest. I'm gonna pin it at the foot as well. All right, so already at this point, uh, you can start placing him down, making sure he doesn't rock backwards and forwards and making sure that those feet are even. Now, you do have some options here as to posing, like you could pose him with one little leg up if you wanted as well. I prefer all four feet on the ground just to give him that little bit of extra stability. All right, so with those front legs positioned, we're now going to do the back legs. So because his body's twisted around, his, one of his back legs is going to be very close to the front foot, and one of them is going to be further away because that's where the twist in his body is happening. Both of your back feet are exactly the same, so just grab one of them. So we're gonna squish it flat in the direction of the middle toe, and then what I'm gonna do is line it up with the edge of the green on that sort of front side, which is his left side, so that it tucks right up against that front foot there, like you can see, hitting that in place. 
Note that we can see the whole foot, we can see all three little toes, and I'm also going to just pin it down there as well. Now there's a reason that I avoid putting pins directly up through the feet, and that is because they can interfere with the balance test, and you don't want that. So to position the other foot, we flatten it in a similar manner, and what I'm going to do is count nine rows up from the tip of the tail. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that's there, just put a little marker in. And then I want to count up to 13. So if that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's where we want the, the other foot positioned. So lining up the opening of this foot between those two pin markers, I'm going to pin it in place. So that is our configuration for our feet. So here we have, so stand your croc up, make sure he doesn't wobble. And if he does wobble, adjust the height of your feet, not, not the, where they are positioned along the body, just the height. So move them up or down a row until you are happy with how he sits. Okay, and now I'm just going to sew all of those on. And there is your finished crocodile. And just because I couldn't resist, I burdened him with glorious purpose. Okay, so that's it for this week's video. Currently YouTube will be recommending the video they think best for you here. But if you're looking for more patterns to work on, you can click here and it'll take you to an entire playlist of my patterns. All right, I'll see you next week. Bye. Da, 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 da.